Hi everybody, uh, Seth Rudetsky here. Today's deconstruction is for those of you who like the more obscure. First of all, where am I, you ask? I'm in Provincetown, because uh, I'm doing a show here. So right now I'm seeing my friend Mark's place. It's so, I, here, look how pretty it is. It's very country, rustic. I kind of have my own private apartment-ish. Anyway, the point is, that's not the point. The point is uh, I'm deconstructing Carrie. I'm doing these deconstructions in honor of my show coming up at the Leicester Square Theatre. By the way, why Homer Simpson can't think? The Leicester Square Theatre in London. And you know, Carrie first played in London, the Royal Shakespeare Company, is that what it's called, RSC? But before that, there was a reading, 1984. So this is like a really odd tape. This is the recording of the reading of Carrie, which is by Michael Gore and Dean Pitchford. And I'm not going to say who's in the reading. You have to guess some of the voices. So let me first uh, set up the scene. This is the scene when it's two couples. So it's the nice girl who it feels bad that she was mean to Carrie at gym. And she's asking her boyfriend to take him to, to take Carrie to the prom. And then it's the mean girl that is asking her boyfriend to get revenge on Carrie and basically, you know, spill pig's blood on her because we all do that when we want revenge. It's an old chestnut. Um, okay, and the first girl you're going to hear sing. Now, let me just say... Carrie, the score is amazing to Carrie. It's by Michael Gore and Dean Pitchford, who also wrote the movie Fame. And that is your clue for who is singing the first solo. Okay, so here, have a listen. Here we go. Let me go back for one second and play. Let's go. Ah, such a pretty voice. You recognize the voice? So pretty. Okay, if you don't recognize it here, remember I said the clue is fame. Here, remember this? Here we go. Remember, it's so girly and sweet. I celebrate the me to call. I toast to my own reunion. Just like one voice. When I become one with the sun. Okay, anyway, so it's Laura Dean. Such a great singer. So Laura Dean is playing the nice girl. So here, let's listen to it one more time. By the way, what I love about this song, you'll hear in a second, that it's the same chords over and over again, but it's like three, I think it's three different melodies. And sometimes when that happens, like one melody is good and two are bad, but every single melody is so interesting. So this is the first melody that Laura Dean sings. So pretty, listen to this, here we go. Recognize the next voice. Recognize this, ready? So here, that's the clue. You hear the vibrato, and then you hear the amazing mix. Listen to that once again. Once again. You hear that? Wait, listen to the vibrato on me. I'm obsessed with it. One more time. Here we go. So you hear that? So it's amazing vibrato, and it's a signature mix. I am, of course, talking about. Here we go. I want it all. Liz Calloway, who's known for her mix. She literally, every email she sends to me, so always love your favorite mixer, Liz Calloway. So let's hear it one more time. We're going to hear the vibrato. We're going to hear the mix. Okay, back to this. Mix. Listen to the vibrato on her. Sorry, I'm obsessed. Now it's a nice guy. Recognize who this is. I 
Listen. Could you hear that line reading? Because you're too depressed. Okay, who does that sound like? Anybody? It's getting a little bit more. It's like not the most famous song from this show, but here, see if you recognize this voice. I'd walk into class with a nail through my nose. People say, I walk into town with a nail through my nose. It's Todd Graff. So Liz Calloway and Todd Graff, who were boyfriend, girlfriend, and baby, are now opposites in Carrie. But it's Todd Graff, who, by the way, also made the movie Camp, which is brilliant. And, by the way, of course, discovered. Anna Kendrick. Okay, so we're gonna go back for one second. We're gonna hear it one more time. Let's go back. Now we ask for Prada. Once again. Now the most, okay, now this is the melody I'm totally obsessed with. Like I said, it's the same chords. Listen to the amazing riff Liz Calloway does. I'm completely obsessed with it. Okay, so what I love about this riff is that it sounds gonna get burned, but my intern Ross thinks that she actually goes down to the seventh. Gonna get burn, burn. It's really, really quick. It's essence of the seventh, but I don't think she quite hits it, but you hear the essence of the seventh. Okay, one more time, here we go. Sorry. Ready? So what I love is that she's so crazily aggressive and then she crazy backs off because she realizes how crazy hostile she is. Okay, so listen for one second. Now here comes Effie. Effie White. I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with the Effie, huh? <laughs> okay, here one more time. Here we go. This is the mean guy. So that's Peter Neptune, who was in Leader of the Pack. Leader of the Pack, there were there was these there was there were these kind of rock and roll shows in the eighties. There was Leader of the Pack, and there was also a show called Rock and Roll, the first five thousand years. Now, by the way, I have a great story about rock and roll. I'm so sweaty in Provincetown. Do you see? Oh my god, I'm so hot. All right, anyway, Rock and Roll, the first five thousand years. So Lilius White was in that show, and she told me that there was uh, another woman in the show, really, really young, like you know, twenty one, twenty two. And I think the other woman was understudying, you know, it was rock and roll. It was like Aretha Franklin. I think she was understudying like Janis Joplin, the character Janis Joplin. So anyway, they started rehearsals and this woman said to Lilius, she's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to quit this show because I really want to try to be a pop star. And Lilius is like, okay, we all want to be pop stars. She's like, you're on Broadway. Like, stay in this Broadway show. Do it for a couple of years and then, you know, pursue your pop dreams. And this woman's like, no, nah, I'm going to quit. And she's like, how could you literally quit a Broadway show for something? Anyway, so the woman quit. And then Rock and Roll, the first 5,000 years, last on Broadway for, I don't know, around two weeks. And the woman's name was Madonna. Isn't that amazing? It's like, you're never going to become a... Yeah. Okay, let me keep going. What's the next section? Okay, here we go. Now, this I love, because everyone's going, baby, 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 do me a favor. Except for the nice girl, Laura Dean. Says Tommy. So it's this crazy clash where one's saying Tommy, one's saying baby. Listen for one second. They changed it on the Broadway show. They made everyone say baby. But I love that it's like, baby Tommy, what? Here, listen how clashy it is. Okay, by the way, speaking of that, speaking of clashing words. Totally side story also. I was talking to Carrie Butler, who was doing, um, I was interviewing her. She was doing hairspray. And you know, a stop, 
don't know, please stop, don't know, please. Okay, so one night, stop, don't know. One night, for some reason, Linda Hart reversed it. And she went, stop, no, don't. So it got clashy. But then for the entire song, she kept going, stop, no, don't. While everyone's going, stop, don't, no. So after the song, Carrie was like, wait, Linda, <laughs> like you did it wrong, but why did you literally the entire song reverse the lyrics? And it's like, well, I made a mistake that first time, and then I thought if I continued doing it, the audience would think that it was on purpose. So the whole song, stop, no, don't, stop, please, ow! Anybody? Tommy, Tommy, baby, baby. Okay, let's keep going. Here we go. Okay, now anyone can help me out here, by the way. I can't really understand any lyrics Todd Graff is singing, and I couldn't quite find them. I understand do what? I understand no way. And that's about it. I mean, like, maybe one or two, but see if you can understand these lyrics. Here we go. Huh? Huh? Where's my ear trumpet? So anyway, then he starts agreeing. First he goes to take to take her to the prom. He goes, no, 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 no. It's such a quick agreement. No, 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 I may, okay. It takes him four measures. He's completely against it. No, 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 I may, okay. Here we go. Oh, let's go into it once again. Actually, it's so quick. Lyric. And then a quick transition. Five seconds later. Okay, then finally the moment where everyone sings together. And you know those songs where like, there are four different parts going on, but you really like just focusing on one of the parts because it's your favorite. Like in I'm a Woman, I was listening to the up, down, shut up, brown. You know that from Smokey Joe's? Anyway, whenever I listen to this, I always listen to Liz Calloway because I get to hear the riff again. So here we go, one more time. Here we go. Now, this also I sort of am interested in. I'm always interested in when um, a melody finally all comes together, but it actually has to be changed because the chord changed the drops. Instead of, I want her to pay up for all that she's cost me and make her good and sorry that she ever cost me. Liz has to go, I want her to pay up for all that she's cost me and make her good and sorry that she ever cost me. That's what I like. Is that I just cool like the second time through. I don't know. I, I guess I just love... It reminds me, it just reminds me of Broadway. I don't know, there's something very Broadway-ish about it to change the melody. I don't know why they're so Broadway, but it just reminds me of Broadway. Like the second time through, you know what it kind of reminds me of in um, Old Fashioned Wedding? Uh, instead of, uh, if I can't have that kind of a wedding, I don't want to get married at all. The last time through, she has to go, if it's not a big wedding, I don't want to get married at all. She has to change it to make it work. But anyway, here, here we go. Obsessed. Okay, let's see. Listen to Liz. The final thing is, um, there's no button on this. I, I, I would always think it's, uh, if you really love me, well then baby, baby, please do me a favor. Button. But there's no button. The button is sort of the last eighth note. It's actually, it's a really cool ending. The button is almost the air being sucked back. You know what a button is, like the final, it's not, please do me a favor, womp. There's no button. The button is actually like the last eighth. Okay, here we go. The button is the silence. Peace out.